Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to make a neem oil soil drench. And you're going to be using this before you have plants in the ground. Last year, actually for the last two years, I had wireworms in these beds. They came in when I put in mulch that I ordered. Wireworms are like those mealworms that you feed birds. They get into onions, garlic, root crops, and cause damage. So two years ago I was experimenting with a soil drench and that's basically two to four tablespoons of neem oil in a gallon of water, two tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons of Castile type soap. I'll go over all that in a second. Mix it up and you drench the soil getting down a good six inches. That process killed off the wireworms over that first year really that I could plant in it. I did it a second year, they're gone now. So when do you use this? This is being used in the spring early before I really have crops in the ground. Now I'll be doing a video in the future perhaps on using neem oil so soil drench when you have plants growing, um, but I'm still kind of experimenting with that. So in this space, this is where I'm going to use the, the drench in each of these containers. I'm going to fix up the containers. I'm going to be putting kale in here. I put a ag fabric a canopy over this that are for fruit trees. I want to kill out any possible problematic eggs, grubs, or things that are in the soil. So that's how I'm going to use the drench. Now before I get to the recipe, a couple of things. A neem oil drench will impact any eggs that you have in the soil. So it's potential, there is potential to kill off earthworm eggs. However, earthworms multiply multiple times a month, like really every seven to 10 days. So any damage that you might do to earthworm eggs will be taken care of because the oil breaks down, you know, after about a week or so. But it will impact grubs that you have in there. It could impact um, eggs, maybe um, you have aphids or white flies that were in here like I did when I clean these out. So there's some stuff laying in here that I want to treat. The drench won't kill mature earthworms, don't worry about that, but I just want to make sure you recognize that if there are beneficial eggs in here, the neem oil could damage that. The benefit, grubs are usually dropped in the soil once a year, usually in the summer. They overwinter, they come out to be whatever, you know, the beetle that laid those eggs were. Usually in my area it's Japanese beetles. So I'm going to use the drench to treat this whole space clean it up of potential problems so that when I put a canopy over this, I don't have anything crawling out of the soil. I know that was a long explanation, but I don't want people just to, you know, be throwing neem oil drench all over the place. I want you to understand what it does and how it impacts different, um, different insects, worms, beneficials, all that. So let's get to making the recipe and drenching the soil. The recipe is pretty straightforward. This is two gallons of water and you're going to use really two to four tablespoons of neem oil per gallon. If you're having an infestation, I would go with four tablespoons. I'm gonna use three because I really wanna take care of the soil before I put the fabric, the ag fabric domes over that. I just lost count. Uh-oh, let's just say that was three. One, two, Three. So I'm using three tablespoons of neem oil per gallon of water. I sell all this at my seed shop. Wherever you buy your neem oil, I just want to say this again, you want 100% cold pressed neem oil. That has the azadiractin in it. That is the chemical compound that impacts the insects that you don't want. So we've got six tablespoons in there, three tablespoons per gallon. This is Castile type soap. It's the most gentle soap. I'm using three per gallon too. The reason you put the soap in there is you really want the oil, I'm gonna actually do five, two and a half. You want the oil to be dispersed through the water so that when you pour it onto the soil, the oil's evenly spread out. And I'll show you how to do that. In addition to this, you don't have to do this right now. This is an, another experiment I'm doing. I'm gonna put in some peppermint oil. I use peppermint oil, rosemary oil, all of which I sell at my shop as my main ways to deal with pests in the garden. So this is just one teaspoon of peppermint oil. It irritates soft-bodied insects. 
and I, again, I just want to make sure I clean the soil as best I can. Now you're outdoors. You're not going to clean this 100% perfectly, but remember, grubs from beetles, that they usually lay their eggs in the summer, and you know they come back in the summer. So you're going to try and kill them off. Soft-bodied insects get coated with oil. They smother. Eggs get impacted by the azadiractin, messes them up. So we're putting that all in there. Even the soapy water will impact soft-bodied insects that are crawling around there. Worm eggs could be damaged, but remember, worms lay eggs multiple times per month all throughout the year. So whatever you damage will be repopulated. So I sell this at my seed shop too. You j I'm just kidding. You want to really mix this through. It's a little bit cold here. So the mixing might take a little bit, but you want to really stir it up, agitate it, and you want to do this multiple times as you're pouring it out. You really want the oil to get dispersed through the water. And I want to stress that because you don't want the oil floating on top. You just dump water in most places and then you just put a, a big patch of oil in there. That's not going to work. So that looks pretty good. All right, now let's go pour it on. I'll show you how I do that. Remember, this is two gallons. After you mix this, let it sit for a minute, and if the oil comes to the top within that minute, add a little more soap. So the Castile soaps are very uh, gentle, so I use a lot more of that. If you're using the detergent type soaps, maybe start with one tablespoon, mix it through, see how it does. So again, this is a soil drench without plants. I wouldn't recommend this for plants right now, only because I haven't used it. Tons of research says it does no harm. We're going to pour it in. Woo. Be careful. And you're really thinking about putting enough in that th this soaks down to the top four to six inches of the soil. And really coat it. Something this size is gonna take almost two gallons. You really wanna do it right if you're gonna do this. Anything that's living in there, that's eating the organic matter, that is in the insect family, grubs getting coated with this, soft-bodied insects, should die off. That's it. Now, now the ratio I used here, again, I want to stress is for the soil drench without plants, and this is not the ratio that you would use if you're spraying on plants. Please check out my YouTube channel for neem oil uh, foliar spray. The recipe is very, very different. So I can smell the neem oil. I can smell the peppermint oil. This is well soaked in. The next thing I want to do, and this is ladder wire mesh that I just rainbow across. And this is what I sit the canopy of ag fabric over. It has a zipper. So I want to do that now so nothing new flies into here. But this is really the best way that you can really not technically sterilize your soil, but you're trying to kill off grubs and other problematic insects that may impact your plants. I just don't want um, aphids in here. I don't want white flies. I want to reduce the number of grubs so that the plants that are in here grow like I want them to. By putting the ag fabric over here, I keep that white moth off of my kale. So these are all going to be for kale plants or the brassica family plants. Keeps that white moth from laying um, the green worms on here. It really, really works. I did this last year. Let me just throw the canopy over here. You might want to see what that looks like and we'll finish up. This is how I grew my kale last year. I put four kale plants in. The ag fabric did a wonderful job. This is a canopy for fruit trees. I have so many of them because we had cicadas last year. So I'm repurposing the canopies I used on my fruit trees. Some of them come with zippers, some of them don't. If you don't have a zipper, obviously you lift it up, but the zippers are nice. You can just zip up, get in, plant, harvest, do whatever you want to do. I would plant in here about three days later. I don't think there's any worry to plant right away, but I don't, what's the point? Let everything kind of just do its thing before you put in your plants where some insects may climb up onto the leaves or get on the leaves and survive. So three days later, this is ready to plant. I'm not going to do a second soil drench. If you're having significant problems, where you have like wire worms or you really have some sort of infestation, I would go with the four tablespoons of neem per gallon of water just to fully treat it. If you're doing something like I did, you know, two or three tablespoons. It really depends on what you want to do. 
The whole key is to make sure you put in enough soap that that oil disperses through here so when you're pouring it in, it's actually seeping down into the soil, covering the organic matter, uh, problematic insects will eat, covering the grubs, and all that. I think, you know, I think I've uh, <laughs> beaten this horse down, but I just want to stress the right way to do it, you know, so you have a good experience in your garden. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And if you want to subscribe, I'll show you how I plan up this entire garden through 2022. Again, thanks for watching.